Hello, my name's Annette Sunbeam Fabric Art. Welcome to my channel. Do you have things in your sewing space that you are tired of? You almost hate them. Maybe at one time you loved them and then the longer they hung around, you kind of grew to dislike them or at least feel like just throwing it all in the trash. I had such a problem. I had a large bin full of mostly strips that I had, I did a big quilting marathon about three months ago and I ended up with loads and loads of strips that I cut off the edge of the quilt when I squared it up. And some of them were uh, had been hanging around in my stash for a long time. I was just tired of looking at them. There was a really pretty old sheet set that I have made several beautiful projects out of, but I fell out of love with it. I was just tired of seeing it. And I almost thought about just pitching this bin in the trash, but I'm so glad I didn't. And come along and I'll show you what I did today. Here it is. Here is this giant pile of strips that were so intimidating and so annoying to me. My first thought was to make a little square center to a block and just sew strips around the outside of the square and see what I could come up with. And you'll see as this video progresses, I am not doing any measuring. I'm not doing very much pressing, if any at all. I am really just thinking in this mode of, I want to get rid of this. I want to get it out of my house, but I didn't want to throw it away because that's so wasteful. So I'm forcing myself here to do something with it. And I'm really not taking a lot of time to make it perfect. You can see I'm just attaching a strip right sides to the project. I'm sewing that straight line and then I'm trimming off any excess bulk. Well, here it is, the block I ended up with, and honestly, I was not inspired. I was not thrilled. I didn't really like it, so I'm going in a different direction. I took a few minutes, probably about 20 minutes, and I sorted my strips out into various color families. And with no real plan in mind, I just sat down at the machine and start, started sewing strips together of similar length. Having the various colors kind of separated out kept me from putting, say, two blues right next to each other. So it was easy to just grab from one pile, then grab from a different pile. I didn't plan anything. I didn't plan light, dark, or color combos. I just grabbed what felt right I was just so over it, so over these scraps, so over these leftovers from backing of lots of quilts that I've already done, just so ready to move on. I didn't want to spend much time thinking or planning. I just wanted to get this stuff out of my house.
and round one of these strips is officially over as I separate those strips with my blade saver. And at this point, I am still really not having any fun. This seems like a lot of work to me, but I feel like I have to do it because I don't wanna just throw these fabrics away. Once I had all that done, I sorted my strips into length. I was trying to do anything I could to make this project easier to get through this, and I thought by sorting them into lengths, I would not have to worry about matching. I would just be able to sit down at the sewing machine and keep on sewing strips together. And at this point, I was kind of able to breathe again because I know that that first round, when you're doing scraps or strips or anything like this, that first round is always the hardest, always the longest to get through. So I really love doing strip blocks where four strip blocks come together to make a big block. Um, in this case, I wanted to make these blocks as big as I possibly could to use up as much fabric as I possibly could. Once I had a good length of strips sewn together, I cut off a length, then I sewed down one side of this strip, and then I sewed down the other side of the strip after squaring it up to make a tube. So once we have our tube, we can make squares by using triangles. I'm going to line up the diagonal line on that ruler with my seam line. At this point, I'm really not worried about how big these blocks are gonna be. I'm sliding my ruler a little bit to the right to make sure my cut is on fabric and not on an empty spot. Now I'm going to move my ruler a little bit so that diagonal line is on that seam on top. And I'm gonna slide my ruler to the right so that I am cutting on fabric almost to the stitch line and not on empty space. And here's our basic block and I'm going to be making more of these blocks and joining them together to make a giant block that incorporates four of these smaller blocks. And all the ends that were not big enough to make a square, I just made a straight edge so that eventually I'm going to join those with each other of similar size and get some more blocks out of that. I'm still not thrilled working with all these strips, but at least at this point, I felt like, okay, I've got a plan. I'm going to make giant blocks and use up all these strips. And I will say now that sorting them out by size was a great idea. That saved so much time by doing that initial sort of the two strips together into size because then I didn't even have to think. I just picked up from my pile. They were already in order of length and I could just sew, sew, sew. You will probably notice that my edges are not straight on many of these strips. I didn't wanna take time to straighten edges or do any of that uh, prep work. I just wanted to get this done. And here is what we have now. I have lots of strips sewn together in order of size. And we'll take a little walk down my hallway 
and you can see what a long piece of strip I ended up with. I decided to just join them all together because um, that would that would be less waste in the long run, less waste of cutting off too much or not enough. By the time I got to this pressing stage of the game, I was feeling a little bit better. I was feeling like I was accomplishing something and I wasn't hating these strips quite as much as I did at the beginning. My next step was to lop these off into about 18, 19 inches. I was absolutely not interested in precise measurements. I folded these over on a seam line and then I trimmed to about nine inches. After that, I took all these to the sewing machine and I sewed down the other side with about a quarter inch seam to make my tube. All right, let's go over making these squares one more time. I'm lining up that diagonal line on my ruler with my stitch line on either side. Then making that 45 degree cut. Next, I reposition so the diagonal line is on that top stitch line. And then I make another 45 degree cut. And I'll just keep repositioning my ruler until I run out of strip. And here is that stack of finished blocks. I also ended up with a large stack of triangles that I'm going to be able to put together to make additional blocks. And then I've got some long strips that were not wide enough to make um, squares. And those are going to come in handy later. I just didn't know it at the time. To begin making my giant blocks, I am sewing two of these smaller blocks together with the points touching each other. Once that was done, I placed two of these sets of two blocks right sides together to make that diamond shape and I put a clip on that center seam. I kind of nested that center seam, matched that up real well, and then clipped it. I didn't pin anything else or match anything else, just that center seam was all I cared about at this point. Now one product I have that I don't get to use a lot is this giant square ruler. It measures 20.5 inches. Well, that is exactly the size I am trimming these giant blocks to. They are all getting trimmed to 20 and a half inches. I'm lining up that center dot, the center seam, 
on 10 and a quarter inches. I got the great idea of doing a piano key border. So once I was done trimming up these square blocks, I took the remaining strips that were too skinny to make blocks and I trimmed those to six inch widths. Once I was finished, I started laying this project out on the floor and you'll never guess what happened next. I got the biggest smile on my face. I saw this layout and I just fell in love. I was like, oh wow, how could I hate this fabric? How could I hate these scraps? This is so beautiful. Well, to finish assembling this project that I am now in love with, I started sewing two and a half inch white strips to the sides of each of those blocks. I completed each row, then I sewed the rows together. To make my sashing strips for between the rows long enough, I had to sew more than one strip together. Um, and guess what? When I put these uh, strips on that divided the rows, I didn't put them right sides together. I put a right side together with a wrong side and I had to undo some of my sashing and redo it. But since I was in love with this project again, it didn't faze me at all. When I put the rows together, I did use a lot of clips and I folded back the fabric to make sure that my blocks and my sashing strips were lining up with each other. Once I had all the sashing on, it was time to add that piano key border. That was the easiest part of this project. There was nothing to match, nothing to worry about, just matching the sides and sewing that approximately quarter inch seam. And here, friends, is that finished quilt top. I just love it. I think it's beautiful. I'm so glad I tackled this silly pile of strip scraps and didn't toss them. I still have those triangle end pieces to deal with, but honestly, I feel good about those now. Thanks so much for coming along with me today, and I hope to see you back again soon.